Hello, good evening. Hi, everybody. Nice to see you all. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. It is evening here in Sydney. Uh, we are joined today uh, by Andrew Grigalunovic, who is joining us from Riga in Latvia. It is morning for you. Is that right, Andrew? Yes, uh, you're perfectly right, Daniel. That's uh, that's nine a.m. here. Nine, nine a.m. Perfectly civilized. Yeah. Fantastic. So Andrew is. Uh, uh, he wears many hats. He is uh, the founder of the Financial Modelling World Cup, but he's also uh, a, one of the examiners for the FMI. So we are talking today about level two uh, of how to become a chartered financial modeler from FMI, the uh, Financial Modelling Institute. We also have a, an illustrious panel with us today. All of the people who are joining us have uh, attained their their CFM, as have Andrew and I. So I'm just going to introduce you to our panel, first of all. Maybe we'll start off with Sergey. So Sergey is joining us from uh, Frankfurt. So you just sat for your CFM fairly recently, didn't you, Sergey? Indeed, indeed. It was like the first uh, virtual exam last October, I think. Okay, so the exam is, uh, as, as most exams are nowadays, uh, held virtually. And so you sat the very first one that was held in October. The next session is coming up on the 24th of April. And of course, that is also going to be uh, held virtually as well. So we've also got uh, Nitish. So Nitish, Nitish is joining us from Delhi. So Nitish, when did you uh, get your CFM? Hi, Daniel. Uh, thanks a lot for introducing me. I got my CFM back in April 2019. I took the exam in Delhi itself. It was a proper in-person doctor test. Ah, remember back in those days when we were sitting them face-to-face. Uh, -face. <laughs> and we're also joined by yes. Maria. Maria is uh, joining us from Manila in the Philippines. And when did you get your CFM? I got it in October 2019. So it's also in person. Uh, I can't hear you very well, Maria. I just, uh, I just missed what you said. Hello. Uh, that's a little bit better. Right. Uh, in October 2019, it was also in person. Oh, wow. You've, uh, you've been qualified for quite a while. That must have been one of the very first sittings of it. Yeah. I'm and not sure. <laughs> Uh, and what about you, Andrew? You sat it way back then as well, didn't you? Yeah, I actually, you know, I was like the early adopter of AFM and a CFM. So basically, as soon as uh, FMI was established and the first exams were launched, so I kind of applied for the AFM, uh, got uh, clear, cleared the level, then went for the CFM, uh, cleared the level as well. So that was something like 2018, I think. Wow. And by the way, I was sitting uh, the exam, which is interesting, like Sergey was, uh, he, he resides in Frankfurt, as I understand, and he's kind of, uh, you know, did, did that uh, virtually while I was actually doing the CFM level in Frankfurt uh, in person. <laughs> so, but I didn't see you there in Frankfurt, Sergey. <laughs> ah, really? You guys sat at the same time? No, or the A of no, no, no. Maybe. Yeah. But I took the, the, the AFM in April, what was it? Or was it October 2018? So maybe we just missed each other by, by one uh, exam period. Maybe, maybe. That's kind of a, you know, not, nowadays it's, it's much easier for the countries that do not have their testing centers to get, uh, you know, qualified because you don't have to, you know, to fly um, to, to, to the testing center. Like, uh, you know, even if it's a two day uh, trip, then for me, it costed like, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the plane tickets, the hotel and everything kind of costed more than the exam itself. So that's kind of nice that so the uh, online settings are, uh, are available now. So absolutely, absolutely. So uh, I am going to assume that the people who are joining us today are interested in sitting for their level two. In order to sit for level two, you have to do level one. Now, I know that there are a couple of people perhaps who are joining us who haven't yet done their level two. Uh, we financial modelers like to plan well in advance. So I think there's a few people who are joining us just because they want to find out uh, what level two is all about. But in order to sit for level two, you have to sit level one first. And 
And for level one, you have to build a full set of financial statements in four hours. And it's very much about speed and accuracy and being able to build uh, a very, a, a fairly uh, straightforward, I suppose, in terms of uh, complexity, but a fairly um, a standard three-way financial model. When it comes to uh, level two, however, and Andrew's going to go into a little bit more about this in a minute, for level two, you do need, it really ramps up the complexity a lot more. It's quite a different format. Um, it's not just one model. There are several models to choose from. It very much focuses on uh, problem solving. Uh, and it's it's uh, in some ways a lot more difficult to prepare for because you have no idea uh, what the exam is going to throw at you. Well, you have some idea and that's what we're going to take you through today. Uh, but it's, it's, it's much more difficult to prepare for because there's just such a much broader range of types of models and subjects that could be covered in the exam. Now, uh, I'm going to uh, hand over to Andrew in a moment. Now, Andrew is actually one of the graders for the FMI. He also sets some of the exams as well. Uh, I uh, am, have been a proctor for the uh, for the face-to-face -face exams as well as for online. Andrew's also done that as well. Uh, so Andrew's going to take us through and tell us a little bit about the exam and as, a, as an examiner, what they are looking for. Over to you, Andrew. Okay, okay, thank you, Daniel. Uh, here I also have to, you know, uh, be careful a little, a little bit to, you know, kind of keep, uh, not to talk a bit too much of what's uh, confidential, so... Yeah, yeah, you really have to uh, have to be careful there, so we'll... Uh, we'll have to be ba can. balancing out, but yeah. uh, we'll also try to give uh, the best piece of advice that I can. And yeah, just uh, as, as you correctly mentioned, Daniel, so basically I'm, uh, I'm an exam, yeah. Over time, I've evolved into basically exam grading, uh, creating, uh, like being one of the uh, people who are doing this. So like uh, there is a whole team working on that, but I got experience on uh, each part of this uh, process. And I hope that some of the, uh, you know, advice could be useful for, uh, for everyone who is attending today and also for, for the people who will be, will be looking for, um, for the recording later. So... Uh, uh, I've actually uh, prepared a very short uh, PowerPoint of, uh, ju just to kind of help myself to go through the uh, through the notes and ideas. So I'm going to share my screen now, and uh, so you should be able to see it now. Um, and you see that, uh, as Daniel mentioned, uh, I'm actually uh, like while preparing that I took our template templates uh, from the Financial Modeling World Cup. That's, uh, that's a competition that's actually being uh, organized by my team. And uh, as you see over here, like uh, a subtitle for the, uh, for the presentation is actually that it's an exciting way of preparation to financial modeling exams. And here is, uh, here is uh, what I'm actually, like here's the background of uh, FMWC, of the National Modeling World Cup. So basically, that's a fairly new competition that's uh, replaced, uh, in a way, model of uh, that was uh, running for uh, many years before that. Uh, and the logic for us, when we were kind of thinking of, uh, we're not, we were not actually thinking of uh, of a financial modeling competition of another one, but uh, the whole idea of this uh, event, uh, and this is also the reason why it's monthly. Uh, not annually, uh, but it all roots in the uh, effort to create some ways for people to prepare exactly for the CFM, uh, for the CFM exam. Because, uh, you know, I've been, I've been a CFM uh, charter holder since, since 20, 2018. And, uh, you know, it's been quite an interesting uh, journey to get an AFM, then a CFM, and now the next level will be an MFM. But uh, as you know, uh, we don't have enough uh, participants yet, so that uh, it doesn't really make sense for, uh, for FMI to create the level as, as long as there are not too many um, you know, for possible exam takers yet. So my goal was yes, to I'm think really of interested to hear what's going to be at the in the MFM. I can't even imagine what that's going to be like. 
Yeah, I mean, like if CFM is that part of that AFM, I can't really imagine what's going to be uh, what's going to be on the MFM level. Uh, I think that what uh, I, I I couldn't probably locate this in the marketing materials, but but sometimes uh, some time ago, or maybe it's still there, they were positioning that the MFM that's the black belt of financial modeling. So that could be something uh, you know really interesting to obtain. Uh, you know, really become the uh, the financial modeling black belt, like in karate or in uh, all these uh, martial arts. So, uh, and here is uh, what our th team was uh, thinking of and doing, uh, like that was happening uh, back uh, last year in, in, like in summer. We were thinking of like, what could we do for, uh, to help people to, you know, pass uh, CFM level. We wanted to create a training program, we wanted to create them some kind of several cases for, for the people to train. Uh, but it, again, it turned out and it's like, while we were, thinking of different ways to do that, uh, it's uh, by no means was uh, financially viable because, you know, we have, uh, as I will show it later, uh, the curriculum is, is, is very wide. <clears throat> it's kind of uh, like 12 or 13 topics, uh, depending on how you combine them and uh, like creating even one case for each of them, that's a huge uh, investment of time and, you know, especially in consulting and financial modeling, you know, time is money. And uh, it was really not worth that. So we, we were kind of thinking of the idea of how to do that. And uh, at the end of the day, the idea evolved into something like, why don't we, instead of creating a training program for a very specific uh, niche on the market yet, uh, which will in time become a uh, like wide, uh, you know, a must have for the profession. But at this point of time, uh, it's still on the way. And uh, at, we decided that instead of that, we'd rather create a uh, something more, you know, interest, kind of more engaging for everybody else who already has taken the exam, who does not plan to do that, uh, for those who are yet uh, not yet taken the AFM but plan to do that. So instead of a training program, we wanted to create a. We eventually evolved into in creating a competition with different cases covering different topics every month. So you basically get an opportunity to trade, an opportunity to solve uh, problems, uh, exam type problems on, uh, on ex very different uh, you know, modeling uh, topics. And that's how FM FMWC uh, came out. And basically within two months we were up and running and uh, the uh, really the competition uh, is growing and gaining popularity. And uh, like this month, uh, we we actually have uh, received the confirmation that Microsoft will become our sponsors uh, of FMWC. So these are huge news. We just need to, uh, you know, get uh, final confirmation for for the marketing uh, materials to announce that. But the, that will come out very very soon. So. Uh, Every month, uh, that's one of the ways to train. Uh, like you get uh, three different cases on different topics, and uh, just a couple of features. That you know, the ratings. You can see how you rank um, among other participants. Uh, uh, we have some regional, national rankings as well. But the best one I wanted to say about FMWC. That's one of the, you know, really few options on the market right now that allow you to really train for uh, for financial modeling exams. So we have time stress, it's two hours for, for the three cases, and uh, it really uh, allows you to first uh, get yourself under pressure, train on, under pressure, and then to review the, the solution model. So basically, uh, it, it's, it's, it's very good to have the, uh, not, only, not only the questions posed, but also the Kind of proposed way how to solve that. Um, yeah, and uh, a nice little addition that's, that we also have a 20, uh, 20k dollar prize fund that's is being split between many. Uh, yeah, we're getting lots of questions in the chat about how, like, where is where is the training course? How can you prepare for level two? And at this stage, uh, I'm always telling people uh, entering the financial modeling World Cup is the best way. Um, at this stage to train for the exam. 
And by the way, uh, FMWC was even admitted uh, or approved by uh, FMI, by the Financial Modeling Institute, to be a, an official training provider uh, for, for the CFM level. So that's uh, not a just a similar or a way to train, but that's an, an officially confirmed way uh, how you can train for, this, for the CFM. But of course, like as with any other training, there is no guarantee that uh, like even if you take... Uh, all, 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 all the uh, stages that you pass because it's, you know, the exams are, the exams are hard enough. So yeah, Daniel has told a little bit, uh, like a lot about myself uh, today. Uh, so basically I just wanted to add that, yes, I'm, I've been ranked uh, number five in the financial modeling world championships uh, in New York 2017. And yes, I'm uh, an approved training provider for uh, FMI and exam content creator and creator and also being a proctor for, for all the exams. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> yeah, a couple of tips, a couple of uh, things that I'd like to uh, cover um, on preparing for, for the CFM uh, level. And please uh, ask, well, Daniel, can, can we arrange it? Uh, I see that there are some uh, questions in the chat appearing, but I, uh, would it be possible that uh, maybe you or someone uh, announce? Uh, yeah, of course, kind of, of course. Yeah, uh, yeah, most of the questions are about the preparation, which we yeah. uh, will cover. Like, are there material? Like, where are the materials? Can you, uh, you know? And I think you're you're going to talk about that um, that sort of thing. Like, uh, what reading materials are available? Uh, what books uh, you can read? Um, Rafi says he's read my book, yep. so uh, using Excel for business and financial modeling, as well as financial modeling for dummies is pre-reading. I, yeah, the, it's great to read a book. The best way is, uh, is, is really practice. It's a practical exam. So I wouldn't, uh, say go off and read a book you need to practice 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 especially if you're planning to sit the exam which is coming up in only uh, I think six or seven weeks from now uh, you need to get in there you need to get your hands dirty and start um, practicing in excel uh, yeah so other questions uh, yeah uh, uh, Henry says is there any thoughts to expand the world cup into a team-based competition to simulate real world teamwork uh, yeah, there are some. Yeah, around. yeah, we we actually do do have some ideas on that as well. So we are thinking of different ways of, uh, let's say, life uh, battles, and there could be team battles. Uh, you know, maybe creating a large model, and uh, you know, collaborating uh, of several people collaborating collaborating on one model, like everybody doing different pieces of that. So oh, you're, you're uh, looking well, at. But the, yeah, yeah, cool. That sounds. We're great. looking at that as well. Mm. Yeah, but that's going to be kind of in addition to the core competition. So we're like, we think we have a nice format uh, as, it, as it stands now, but we want to kind of add some additional competitions, additional tournaments, additional sort of say uh, playoffs or, uh, you know, uh, exhibition cups or exhibition matches. And we try to get it uh, as, uh, as uh, spectator friendly as possible. So that's also a bit of the uh, plans for the, for the future. So it, it's really going to be exciting. Uh, we're just really, uh, you know, working hard to, 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 make it, to make it happen. And by the way, I also saw a question about the 20K price fund that's uh, in US dollars. So uh, about the currency. So that's, that's yeah, US yeah. dollars. Okay. I think that's good for questions for now. Let's keep going. And we're going to do a, a yeah. Q&A session at the end with the panel as well. So um, sure. do feel free to jump in with your questions. You can um, pop them in the Q&A section down the bottom, or you can pop them in the chat and we will address those either as we go or at the end with the panel. Yeah. I mean, like Daniel, if you see anything that's relevant at that point, uh, look, I'm, I'm going to go through the, uh, through yeah. the device and uh, if you feel that anything is uh, relevant at exactly that time, please feel free to interrupt me. So <clears throat> as for the preparation tips for the CFM level, so these are <clears throat> kind of uh, my views on how would I uh, tackle the, uh, the preparation if I had to take part uh, in it again. So uh, first, first thing uh, is that uh, the, uh, well, I, I, I have counted 13 topics there. Actually, after re recounting the uh, uh, all, all, all these uh, items, yeah. so that's a screenshot from the uh, from the uh, FMI uh, website, and you see that uh, like 
at this point of time, the CFA actually gets uh, more like significantly significantly more elaborate in terms of uh, topics covered as compared to AFM. So basically sure. AFM, you're I can see covering... you split out the um, automation and the sensitivity. I think in the um, yeah, the yeah. In, in the body of knowledge it's it's as one. Yeah, great. There's so much in this exam, so much. Yes, yes. I mean, it's uh, this. This is actually on FMI uh, website. So basically, that's a screenshot from there. Uh, so it's 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 not my creation, but uh, anyway, you see that uh, whatever like if uh, previously you were doing uh, just a three-way statement model uh, on AFM level, then for the CFM level, you're basically getting a case on. Uh, you can get a case on every single schedule of that model over here. And also get some additional you know, cases for uh, to, to test uh, outputs, to test uh, data management uh, techniques, to test your automation skills, and so on and so on. And uh, like, if the most difficult part at uh, AFM level was uh, just to manage everything on time and put everything together and to balance out the, the balance sheets uh, and you know to balance out all the three-way statement model that you have here it's like every every schedule will be uh, you will have it like two hours just to create a revenue schedule or two hours just to create a depreciation uh, schedule um, so basically uh, these models uh, could become very elaborate and uh, they would really uh, take quite quite some time to complete. So uh, on the real on, on the live exam on, on the exam day, you will be offered three uh, three cases. Uh, on like probably each of them will be covering one of these topics, or maybe so, uh, several of them. So it could well be that your um, you might get a case that kind of combines uh, putting together a working capital projections, revenue projections, maybe cost projections, or maybe something else. Maybe that could be something like uh, debt and equity forecasting. Uh, although previously, like I have typically seen uh, cases that were kind of specializing mostly on a specific topic. Um, what else? Uh, well. So basically you have four hours, you have to choose two topics out of three. So basically this kind of means that uh, you also need to be uh, quite well aware of uh, which uh, items you're strong at and which you're, you don't really feel uh, too experienced. Uh, There's um, a bit of a question about that actually, a few people have said yeah. in the chat, because I know previously there were uh, four, four cases and you had to choose three, uh, and more recently it's two cases out of, uh, out of, out of three. So yeah. is that something that's yeah. continuing? Yes, uh, I, well, I, in, in, the very, in the very first time uh, uh, I was actually having to choose three out of four, and uh, I've actually... It was funny that I learned that uh, it's only three out of four when I was scanning the exam and I have kind of solved three and a half and ran out of time on the fourth case. And then the proctor told, okay, guys, now you choose the three ones that you wanted to get graded and the fourth one kind of wasn't needed. I said, okay, like <laughs> I've kind of overdone that. Uh, but oh, yes, wow. uh, yeah, like instead of having uh, more questions that are, Let's say, uh, like, the more questions you have, it's, it's still four hours. So uh, the uh, logic of FMI is that they're, they'd rather put uh, more difficult questions, and maybe a, a little bit fewer of them, instead of putting, uh, you know, a lot of uh, you know, less uh, complicated questions. So that's probably something that's going to stay. And for the last, uh, I think that's, it, it, it's for the last couple of years that, uh, that it's been, uh, it's been three case, uh, two cases out of three instead of three out of four. So that's that's a policy that's probably gonna stay. And uh, for for each of the candidates, it probably means that uh, while well, there is uh, more uh, kind of uh, uh, randomness in terms of what you're gonna get there. So you might be very strong at revenue, but you will get uh, subsidiaries, for example, or you might be good at model checking, but you will get data management uh, thing. So 
But anyway, you will still have one case that you can skip. So instead of, so out of these three, you just have to choose the work kind of, you, I, I'd rather skip the one that I'm le less comfortable with. But it doesn't mean that you don't really have to study. Like, for example, like I, if, if a person says, okay, I've been working at, uh, you know, corporate uh, mo modeling for all the time, but I don't do uh, subsidiaries a lot, then uh, I'd rather like kind of, you know, skip subsidiaries at all and don't do anything. Um, and if it uh, comes up at the exam, then I'm just, you know, just, you know, skip this case. But what, <clears throat> that's probably not a very good approach because uh, what could happen is that you might get stuck in one of these uh, topics that you kind of feel more comfortable with. Uh, you know, a case could become a, too, a bit too difficult or there might be some, I don't know, uh, concepts that you are not comfortable with modeling, you don't know how to do that. And so I'd really uh, advise to learn all these uh, topics that, or at least try to train on them, because otherwise it's going to be a little bit too, too risky for you. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, the best way to prepare is practice. Uh, and uh, Daniel has prepared a very good study guide. Uh, that covers all the topics and the proposal. Oh, that calendar. was supposed to be a surprise, Andrew. Oh, I was, oh. was going to tell them about it at the end. <laughs> no, that's oh, cool. Okay. I will send that out to everybody uh, as well as uh, as with this presentation. Yes, so it will help you to know okay. like, how to prepare. So, that's cool. That's cool. They know about it now. Cat's out of the bag. Well, so, sorry, Daniel. I've, I've just blown a surprise. <laughs> I'm kidding. I, you know, uh, anyway. So, uh, okay, but, and, th and this guide, well, now we probably can really <laughs> relate to that. Uh, we'll also give you some, some ideas of how to prepare, how to use uh, FMI's uh, previous exams, sample exams uh, to prepare, to, to cover different topics. And uh, here at FMWC, at the Financial Modeling World Cup, we have also prepared a uh, case bundle, uh, or actually two of them, the AFM case bundle and the CFM case bundle. And uh, these uh, bundles, they cover, we, we kind of combine the previous uh, cases from uh, previous stages of FMWC that uh, could be relevant to CFM. You know, some of these uh, cases are like completely irrelevant. Uh, you won't probably learn a lot, uh, like, or you, you will learn a lot, but uh, this knowledge will not be uh, useful for this particular exam, but those who will be uh, useful and relevant, they will probably be uh, included in this uh, uh, CFM bundle. And for the AFM bundle, we just put together a couple of cases that are really into uh, give you a training option for uh, for AFM exam. Uh, so uh, yeah, and, and uh, well, training that's uh, great. You will get some solution models as well, uh, so you will see how to do that. But probably the uh, best way to train yourself under the uh, you know exam conditions would be to sign up for a proper mock exam, so a training exam uh, that Daniel and me we're, uh, we're putting it uh, organizing it two weeks before uh, before the actual exam. And the logic there is that uh, it's going to be uh, before hours. It's going to be uh, proctor, and uh, what's best, it's going to be graded later, and you will get some uh, feedback uh, as well. So basically, you will have uh, one week before the exam to, you know, to to get uh, to to learn the feedback on what you've had, and to get uh, some maybe final preparations and to clean your final. Uh, topics that are not uh, maybe too, uh, too well known for you. And of course, that's a, a great way for you also to kind of feel through the exam, to sit for the four hours, to feel how your body reacts, uh, like uh, to feel like if it's like maybe two and a half hours into exam, uh, uh, how is your brain working? Does it work good or not? You might try also some nutrition strategies to like do you eat chocolates or uh, or uh, nuts or something else like do you drink a lot of water or not? So that's also these are little tricks and techniques that could be also tested during the uh, during the mock exam instead of doing that on the live exam and then you just you know 
uh, feel that okay, you're drinking too, too, drinking too much water and uh, have a lot of uh, interruptions uh, into your modeling. Uh, so because uh, and you lose time to that. So, and another piece of advice uh, to save time would be to master a couple of shortcuts uh, so that you could, could speed up your work. Uh, I would even say that uh, formatting shortcuts might be the most useful, uh, like uh, formatting as dates, as numbers. Uh, well, basically uh, there was, uh, I don't know, Daniel, if you could uh, advise on, or maybe you might have some, um, materials on shortcuts uh, from your side prepared. Uh, some five or four years ago, I've bumped into a very good material from, uh, from Corality. Uh, the, and I, every time somebody asks for, for a shortcut uh, summary page, I'm sharing this to them, so, to the people. So if maybe I could share this link later as well. Um, yeah, so, definitely shortcuts, trying to get, it's, it's all about speed and stamina, absolutely. Yeah, that, that's correct. And it's all about formatting as well. So basically you kind of, uh, uh, you'd rather keep formatting as you go instead of, because uh, in, instead of, you know, putting all the formulas uh, together and then try to kind of color the model and make it look good. Like, uh, well, a couple of years ago, I was grading an AFM exam, and it was like a very uh, like two-way feeling of, of, of the exam when a person had everything correctly, like all the answers were correct, so the balance sheet was uh, balancing perfectly, but the model was like absolutely not formatted at all. Like it, it looked like uh, very bad, so to say. And, Did the person uh, pass? I don't know. Uh, I'm doing only the uh, part like uh, the technical grading. Uh, so and that, that's a good question for me. I would. The probably the person was definitely on a uh, like on, on, on the verge of passing or failing. Uh, on the it can make a that. difference. Yeah. 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 One of the but, things I wanted uh, to I, I thought I might just I was going to mention this might be a good time to mention it is the fact that uh, the FMWC championships and CFM uh, are quite the FMWC is a great way to prepare for CFM, but remember they're not the same thing because uh, with FMWC, you don't have to, no, unless you are in the top, top ones, they do not necessarily look at your model. Formatting is not important. For CFM, you do need to make sure that your formatting is is good and well they do look at the structure they look at your layout they look at your formatting so it is important for cfm to spend time on your formatting for fmwc uh, it's not important that's correct uh, and there is also another like slight difference in the uh, structure of the models uh, of, of the cases that uh, you have also have to keep in mind uh, that uh, the financial modeling world cup uh, all the cases are well for us to be able to grade several uh, like a couple of hundreds uh, of uh, submissions uh, every month, uh, we need to do it fast and automatically. And therefore it's a multiple choice. And therefore we're trying to make the cases so that it goes from the uh, easiest to the part to the more, more complicated. And basically the questions are kind of guiding you that you get uh, all the answers correctly. Uh, like if you get stuck on question one, you will not be able to attend question two un unless you clear the mistake in question one. Uh, but uh, on the CFM uh, level, it's not like that. So basically you might make a mistake like on the very first minute that you attempt the question, you might you know, mislink an item or do any other mistake. And then that kind of could uh, you know, uh, spoil the answers for all the other parts of the model. The good news here is that uh, the graders will take that into account. So basically, if, uh, for example, if you have a three, if you have, let's say, whatever, a uh, revenue schedule and uh, you, or a depreciation schedule, for example, right? So if there is a depreciation schedule of uh, different groups of assets and uh, one group of assets is, has been mislinked um, and there is uh, an error on that, you will still get full points probably for, uh, you know, putting the total numbers together. The total numbers will not be, you 
know, equal to the proposed answer. But at the same time, if all the formulas are correct there and the mistake is somewhere else, then the points will be de deducted for mislinking the formula somewhere in these, uh, you know, the smaller sections, not for the um, overall uh, thing. So that's also the thing that you need to kind of uh, take uh, into account. And of course, uh, yeah, the emphasis on formatting is important for uh, for CFM. Uh, the uh, and it also takes time. So basically, my suggestion is that you really uh, have to format as you go. Uh, so that's something you you'd really want to do during the uh, uh, during the exam day. Uh, finally, a couple of additional suggestions from my side that you have to keep in mind and you'd better keep it in mind now than uh, on the exam day that uh, CFM is actually much much harder than AFM like uh, for a uh, well basically AFM that's like for everyone who can prepare a three-way statement model that should be uh, a an exercise that's quite uh, easy to accomplish. Uh, CFM is, uh, well, it's not a level up in complexity, that's several levels up in complexity. So the cases are more elaborate. The, uh, the uh, kind of the body of knowledge is much, much wider. So it's, uh, it's, it's much harder to, to attempt. And I, I know quite good modelers uh, that were taking uh, several attempts before they uh, were even able to get the CFM. One of my friends, well, he, he's a CFM now, but uh, it took him uh, quite uh, a couple of attempts uh, to, to pass, even despite uh, the person was uh, also ranking uh, quite high in, in the financial modeling competitions. So that's uh, a thing you need to... Wow, really? So he, he did really well in the competition, but um, found the exam difficult. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And that, that could be typical. And uh, I feel that uh, the reason for that is actually the real life modeling experience. So the more experience you have in real life, the easier would it be for you to pass. Actually, um, that's it is, uh, it is uh, quite it's supposed to mimic real life. And I feel like the best way to prepare, like when somebody has done the exam before, then they they kind of know what to expect and they know what the format is going to be. And they've also got the stamina of the, the four hours. And that's the reason why um, Andrew and I've put together the mock exam, because I feel like that's uh, probably one of the best ways to prepare uh, to actually go through that process and see if you're really ready. Yeah, that's correct. And uh, the cases and the model requirements itself are quite, quite elaborate. So what I wanted to stress is that uh, kind of, uh, well, it depends on the topic. It depends on what's included there. But uh, I would really not be surprised if your exam case solution is like reaches like several hundred Excel rows. Uh, probably one of the most extreme cases I saw was, uh, I think it was 500. 5,600 something rows, but uh, that was a very ill um, kind of per ill understood structure. So that was too much. And basically you can get, you know, points deducted just for overcomplicating the model unneededly un un overcomplicated, but you know. Uh, there's no yeah. um, power query usually, because I know one of the recent examples in the FMWC, there was a power query solution. Um, I wouldn't expect that in the exam, or is that asking too much information? I don't think so. I don't have any uh, I, um, kind of uh, ideas on that, because again, I'm, I'm not in charge of the program and uh, I'm just doing you know, my piece of work. Uh, Anyway, I think you could be uh, fine without a power query because uh, I would only imagine it could be on the uh, data management. So uh, yeah, okay. And anywhere else, I mean, it, it was just uh, it, it just you know a, a lot of modeling, a lot of you know support tables to incorporate a, a complex logic of. Uh, different uh, yeah you know. but you could use uh, power query if you want to but you're not allowed to use any other software no other add-ins or macros or anything pre 
uh, set up, yeah? I, well, for, I mean, um, yeah. I'm not really sure because, but because uh, this is the part I, I it's changing. Just, I know, I know. We had yeah. this question on the one last week, and uh, the guy uh, Julian from um, FMI said that you are now allowed macros, and you do need to check this with FMI if you're planning to use macros. You are allowed macros for formatting and for auditing and um and add in uh, macros and add-ins um but do make sure that you check the fine print and make sure that what you're planning to use is allowed by fmi correct that's correct so uh, yeah and a couple of uh, exam day tips and strategies that's my final slide and then we can get get to the uh questions uh, uh yeah I don't know uh, if that's possible. I believe there is no problem with that, but uh, I would advise like, as there are probably many exam groups during the uh, 24 hour time period at the exam day. So like if you, if you are a morning person, then you probably might choose your morning group. If you're a late night person, you might apply to maybe a group that's, you know, actually supposed for another continent, but you get the, uh, uh, you get the exam at the most productive time of the day for yourself. I, I imagine, Daniel, that there are several groups, right, uh, around the clock. Uh, it's normally held at 9 a.m. Uh, locally uh, at, in your own time zone. Okay. So, well, I'm not sure about this, like if there is a flexibility or not, but if there was, then it could be properly done. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> sleep well the night before. You will Absolutely. need... Uh, to, to be rested and hopefully just you know again that, that that's just an exam like if not uh, this time the next time um you're gonna pass that so uh definitely uh, don't uh, like the only reason for not sleeping well will be worrying too much but if you have done all your preparation correctly then um, that's uh, perfectly fine and by the way from uh, like it could probably also be a good way, like if you do sports, then uh, like, for example, if you do running or like marathons or something, then you probably don't train or for the last couple of days before the competition so that you get rested and your uh, body and your mind kind of gets rest. So I'll probably, well, that's a contradictory advice, but uh, I'll, I might skip, like if an exam is on Saturday, maybe Friday could be a day like off, like, completely without financial modeling. So that's uh, everything sits in, in your brain and uh, your subconsciousness gives you the most, uh, the best piece of advice out of its depth ne the, next, uh, the next morning. So this is, this is not one of those exams where you want to stay up all night cramming um, information because it's not about the information in your head. It's about your, your stamina and your speed and you need to be absolutely at your top peak performance on the day. Right. Uh, the model design, you don't have to recreate what's there on the uh, exam uh, tabs. So basically you can do, you can choose your own design. That's fine. Uh, use whatever you're comfortable with. If, if you have some shortcuts, if you have some pre-created, uh, you know, uh, design uh, elements, why not? That's perfectly fine. And don't leave the design to the end. Like uh, do it as you work, formats everything uh, right from the start, because then you're going to be copying parts of your model uh, and that's going to save you time because they will be al already formatted. Uh, the first question I would like, if you have three cases uh, to choose from, uh, then I will probably go with the most, uh, with the one that's, that you feel yourself mostly comfortable with. So if you like uh, revenue modeling, that seems to be easy enough for you. Stay, start with that and leave other questions for later. Your key goal is to get, uh, get into the, uh, get the feeling, get uh, the, uh, into the rhythm of the exam. So that's something that I really suggest start, start with easy things and uh, scale up the complexity uh, later on. Um, and to it, and, and of course, it's uh, it's very important to read through the instructions. And uh, before you start doing the model, you might want to think through the flow of the data, because uh, if at the end of the day you tackle a problem, uh, and it turns out that uh, it requires some uh, things that you don't know how to do that 
for example, you're not comfortable with uh, revolver modeling and there is a specific case that's, uh, uh, that requires you to do uh, a revolver and you find it out when you are kind of two thirds into the case, you've spent uh, one hour and a half and then uh, you kind of see that you can't complete the case, then you probably uh, maybe choose another case uh, faster. So uh, skip fast, that's, that's my... Uh, that's that's my advice. Uh, and of course, you probably you might be doing good if you re-energize with. Uh, well, for me, chocolate works, uh, nuts work. Uh, um, maybe something like every forty-five minutes or something. Uh, you might see how your body reacts because you know it's it's uh, quite a lot about what your brain is able to get out for you you like if your brain is tired if your brain get runs out of energy you will not be able to do as good as in other cases so these are like i've been trying uh, very a lot of times with my uh while sitting for model of exam for model of tests and i've qualified for finals twice and it's really uh, you know tried and, and was testing a lot of different strategies on, you know, feeding <laughs> the brain during the, uh, the competition. And finally, don't remember that uh, if you make a mistake, uh, it will, of course, influence the output of the whole model, but uh, the score, like, uh, for the next uh, parts of the model will not be probably affected too much. So, uh, like, uh, if, for example, you create a uh, three-way statement model and you make a mistake at your depth scheduling, but everything else works correctly, you will get full points for everything else. So uh, therefore, don't worry too much uh, that you might have uh, made a mistake somewhere in the beginning of the model and it kind of ruins everything else. Don't worry about that. You will still be fine. Just you know, go ahead and uh, do the best that, 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 that you can. Uh, yeah, well, I think that's uh, that's more or less it. Um, that maybe... is fantastic. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, and we are going to send out a copy of those of that PDF. Is that right? Are you able to share that? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Right. sure. We can do that. Lots of people are asking to... about that. Okay, we don't have a huge amount of time uh, left for questions, but just a couple of questions I want to get to. Uh, one about the Excel version. So that is a that is a good question. Um, yes, and as uh, uh, one of the uh, panelists has said uh, that yes, um, you do not need to be using the latest version. Uh, anything from uh, Excel 2010 onwards is okay, but they don't recommend that you use a Mac. Uh, so using Windows is recommended. Um, yeah, can you see any of the other um, any other questions that uh, that you guys would like? Um, so th thank you for those of you on the panel who've been answering questions in the background. That's really really helpful. Uh, so lots of um, lots of questions. A lot of them have been answered. Uh, the reading materials are what's available to prepare. Um, as far as I know, I do not think there is any um, training. So the, there are certain uh, eight, they call them ATPs, approved training providers who are uh, approved by FMI to create training materials and training courses to prepare people for the exams. At this stage, I don't think there is anyone that's providing level two uh, CFM because it's just really difficult to prepare, as Andrew explained, training materials for. And so that's why we've created the mock exam uh, because we well, think that's the best way to prepare. I, I, actually, Daniel just wanted to correct oh. that. So the only, the only uh, officially confirmed uh, uh, training provider is actually the Financial Modeling World Cup. Oh, for level two. Yeah. For yeah. level two, yeah, for yes. level two. Okay. Yeah. So, Does that mean Dumb again, Solutions is not level two? I didn't realize it had to be specific to the, to the levels. Cool, well, that's good to know. Yeah. Great. Great. Uh, so, um, so yeah, there aren't any uh, any preparation courses that you can do, but the mock exam, I think, is so. So, prepare, uh, competing in the World Cup and um, sitting the mock exam is going to be a great, uh, great way to prepare. Uh, are there? Uh, yeah, the virtual exam. I might just go through the process for what the exam is going to be like. Uh, the FMI have got really, really strict and very high standards. Uh, they very much uh, have always done the the train the exam has always been face to face just because the standards were so high. Uh, when they moved to virtual, uh, they. Uh, in, 
make it in such a way that uh, you it, it is still very strict. It's it's quite uh, you have a, an individual proctor who is watching you the entire time. So when you sit the exam, um, you the proctor actually checks the entire room. You're not allowed to have anyone in the room with you. They look around the whole room. Uh, if you need to leave the room, they need to go through that process all over again. Uh, they'll be watching your screen the entire time. I know that a couple of people have mentioned in the chat there were some issues with the the first time we ran the online exam. There was a few issues with the proctoring company uh, that is um, is changed now. FMI is doing their own proctoring. Uh, some of my team uh, from Plum Solutions actually do uh, the proctoring for FMI as well, like for the for the real exam, and uh, we uh, will be creating the mock exam to be as close as possible to the real experience so that you'll be able to see exactly what it's going to be like. Uh, Andrew and his team are setting the exam. That exam is a fresh case study that is not available anywhere else. Um, and his team is going to go through it and provide individualized feedback. Was there anything else you wanted to mention about the virtual experience, Andrew? Uh, not really. Um... <laughs> Yep. Like and, uh, I would say, like if if there if there is an emergency, like a baby comes in into the room crying uh, or something, <laughs> that probably you won't get penalized for that. Of course. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Check the baby. <laughs> Make sure everything's okay. Yeah. yeah and, and by the by the way, yeah, like uh, you you better leave babies uh, with with your uh, other family members. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Probably. Uh, probably recommended. Yeah. Okay, uh, so uh, other other questions. So we might move over to the panel now and see uh, if you guys are able to answer any of the questions. So what are the recommendations? So I'd like to hear from the panel here. What are the recommendations to prepare for the exam for individuals who do not build financial models in their daily work? So um, Andrew's been through a couple of tips, but there are, if for those of you on the panel, is there any, do you have any top tips for people who need to prepare? So Nitish, what would you, how did you prepare for the exam? Hi, Daniel. So actually, my uh, experience personally won't be helpful because I do financial modeling day in and day out. So, mm -hmm. but however, uh, like I've seen a lot of questions coming from the attendees as to, you know, how to use their, uh, because since most of them obviously do not come from a financial modeling background, but they still want to take these exams and, you know, do well in them. Those. One thing which I'll suggest to most of the attendees would be that if they can start with uh, equity investing. I won't, I'm not promoting equity investing here, but uh, what they can do is they can look at the research reports which the major banks and the major uh, valuation companies they work on because they do something very simple. They prepare three statement models and they take their assumptions. They do the financial projections, which is something very similar to what you're supposed to do on the exam day. And this is something which you can use as a case also. For example, there's a company you know very well a famous company, for example, Apple or Google, and you look at their balance sheet, you try and build a very small model from the scratch. Then maybe you look at some other company, an IBM or any other company like Microsoft. Then you try and build out a detailed financial model. You look at their annual reports, study facts, how, what assumptions to use, how to build the three statements. And like Andrew said in the beginning, that once you're making a model, it has to be holistic. You can't just be looking at one thing and then you're like, okay, I... I missed out on something because in the exam, there will be time pressure and you won't be able to look at all things at the same time. That's why you have to be very careful and very precise with all your work. So that's something which I'll suggest to the attendees that they can use these as cases. And just in case you're able to find some value in the stocks which you're looking at, might as well invest in them and you know make some money out of it. So that's a good way to start at least. And then obviously, if you have some other case studies which you can see online because... Currently, I see that there are too many materials which are available online. But yeah, you need to practice well on those and you need to be very precise and concise with what exactly it is that you're trying to build. So that's an idea which maybe the, the attendees can look at. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Nitish. Uh, what about uh, the rest of the panel, Sajay and Maria? What are your uh, tips for preparation? So we've also been asked um, not only your recommendations, but how many hours per day would you prepare? Like maybe you would like to share your experience of how you prepared for it. Maria. 
uh, I'm not sure about how many hours. <laughs> I am not sure about that because I definitely took a lot more time preparing for AFM because at that time I had no modeling experience. So I was really starting from scratch. By the time I took my CFM exam, I already had a few months modeling experience. So that helped me take the exam. I would say that it is not about the time you put into studying. It would definitely have a lot to do with what you already know and how you deal with what you do not know. And you you have to work with what is there. Um, that's why I, I did say in the chat that the body of knowledge is was very helpful for me because in terms of, for example, um, that structuring, uh, I already had that in my experience. But for example, the topics under revenues, I haven't done it in my work. So I had very limited time. <laughs> I'm not sure I want to share how much time I really spent preparing. But uh, so all I did was I opened the models and okay, so this is how you do it. Um, if you're pressed for time, um, review the formula, delete the formula and just do it again. Um, do it from scratch. Uh, yeah, um, it's, I guess, the difference between AFM and CFM. CFM, it's really, if you're taking the self-study route like I did, um, um, you're not going to an approved training provider. And um, at, I took it in October 2019, so I think the Financial Model World, World Cup wasn't around yet. So, yeah, I just practice. <laughs> it's really just practice. And if you still, um, it, it's also important to look for help. Uh, I was fortunate enough that uh, my supervisor took the CFM already. So in terms of parts of the Excel file that I don't understand, um, I'm able to ask, um, what does this mean exactly? So that's my advice. Thank you, Maria. That's fantastic. And Sergey, what are your tips? Um, I think with regards to tips, I'm totally on your page, uh, Danielle, and like practice, 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 right? So um, where you find case studies, uh, where you kind of um, take like cases, is, it doesn't matter. It's very important to practice, to building those schedules, to building like the models in Excel and being fluent in Excel, right? So first, um, uh, what I ensured in the first place that I'm pretty fluent in Excel, right? So it means try to achieve a standard where you kind of like use 90% of the time just your keyboard and only 10% of the time your mouse, right? You don't want to spend too much time just like putting in formulas. So that has to go quick. And then on the second level, once, um, once you achieve that and you're thinking about like uh, how to handle the topics, especially what you know and what you don't know. So for me, it was the case, uh, I have a more or less high exposure to, to, to that schedule. So for me, this one goes like much, much easier than maybe all of the uh, other stuff. Um, so I tried like kind of to leverage on my strength, but also like to reduce my weaknesses, right? Because you want to be sure that you have your kind of like your favorite uh, case, and if it's uh, if it will be in the exam, you want to tackle it the first and fast because you will need time if you're faced with a case where you didn't prepare well, right? If it's like a, something you never faced, like a complicated tech, uh, tech schedule, you will need time to think to how to approach the problem. So what you want to do is you want to save time on those cases where you're good at, to have time to think about where you may be not good at. So um, kind of like a strategical approach on how to uh, tackle the problems. Thank you, Sergey. That's um, that's really, really helpful. That's fantastic. Uh, just one other comment we have from Ernest. Um, Ernest was saying that uh, FMI does reward uh, the that certainly this level two does seem to reward existing financial modelers because they uh, they've got the experience and they're really the only ones who are able to pass the exam. But it's really difficult for someone who isn't a practicing financial modeler to pass the level two. And yes, that is correct. Uh, it does. Uh, it is very practical. Uh, if you are just looking at from a theoretical perspective, if you're a student and you've ever worked in financial modeling, it is possible to pass, but I think it's quite difficult. What do you think, Andrew? Yeah, that's that's correct. And actually, I was also, also trying to uh, ask for, uh, for 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 a word to, to address this question. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, like also addressing the next question that so do, do FMI have, a, have to have any plans to develop the trained resources? Uh, as far as I know, they do not. And they try to position themselves uh, clearly as a uh, only a grading or exam administering uh, body. So they uh, don't want to mix training and grading. They're so very clear about the separation between they are not yeah. a training company, yeah. they are an examination company. Yeah, that's one thing. Uh, another thing is that uh, for you to successfully pass the exam, it's basically, it, it's about practice. That's uh, like uh, experienced financial modelers who have, uh, like when I was passing FMI, uh, like CFM level, I had something like uh, like 18 years of experience by that time, maybe 17 or something. It was uh, not too difficult because most of the cases were done many times you during life. For people who are just starting their career, it's more about practice. It's and again, uh, at least we now uh, we now have the different options to train, uh, to practice with uh, FMWC, with the mock exam, with the practice cases that FMI um, provides. So therefore, I would say that uh, you don't really need a formal training. It's uh, well. You, you'd rather try to learn uh, with, uh, with, with, with the cases, with, with the doing a lot of practice instead of uh, learning the theory. Yeah, we, uh, yeah, Lynn's asking about uh, how do you, uh, how do you practice if they don't give you, if you don't uh, have any materials? Uh, there's no, uh, training as such it is practical so you are given a whole lot of cases now i'm going to send through a copy of that uh, study study guide so it's a, a bit of a cheat sheet of all of the cases that are available so there are two cases that are publicly available there are i think 12 cases so there's three past exam papers that when you register for the exam fmi makes this available so they will give you three past exam papers and each of those papers contains four cases remember back then they had four now they have three. So you'll be given 12 cases to practice on. Now I'm going to detail all of that in your study guide that I'm going to send through to you. So um, it, you'll be able to tick off. You need to practice each of those multiple times. You need to make sure that you can get through those cases in, I don't know, an hour and a half, uh, probably. What do you reckon, Andrew? Um, For each case. Sorry. So for each case, when you practice a case, you need to be able yeah. to do it in about an hour and a half at least, if not less. Yeah, but again, I, I was just reading the, the chat on the same uh, question that uh, Maria uh, advised uh, yeah. to practice accuracy first and time limits later. I would say that like, uh, yeah, like if you're able to do it in, in one hour and a half, then you should be doing good. If you can do it in two hours, that could still be, still be fine. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But remembering that the, yeah, the cases may be slightly smaller for the past exams, I think. So yeah, aim to try to get them done as quickly as you can, because remember, it will take you longer on the day because you need to read through the case materials and, and go through all of that. So we are pretty much, uh, yeah, I can, there's still a lot of, lot of comments going on in the chat, but we are pretty much to time. So we need to, uh, to close off now. Are there any last comments from the panel? Thank you guys so much for, uh, for coming along and for providing your insights. Was there any, any last comments from you guys? No? Maria? Yeah, um, I could just, I just want to say that I very much relate to anyone who feels that, um, Whoever, whoever feels they don't have enough modeling experience. Uh, I passed the CFM with less than a year experience, um, six to eight months. So I, I need to say, uh, you can find me on LinkedIn if you want to ask me about the experience. But yeah. uh, And I believe you are actually available for work right now. Is that right? Yeah, I'm looking yeah. for work. <laughs> and highly qualified as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Uh so yeah, uh, aside, it's not only the financial modeling, it's also about your exam taking skills, pre pre preparing for exams also. So it's doable. <laughs> it's doable. Thanks, Maria. Uh, Maria is also uh, part of our Women in Financial Modeling Network. And we get together uh, every 
at least every month or every couple of weeks even, and we get together and we train for the Financial Modelling World Cup. So you will notice if you have a look at the leaderboard on the rankings, there are more and more women appearing on that leaderboard. So uh, it's a very exciting time to be a um, financial modeler. Yeah. So, and uh, yeah, as for, for any comments from, from, from my side, then uh, of course, uh, I'd, I'd like to encourage everyone to take part in the Financial Modeling World Cup even if not for training for CFM, then just for fun and for testing yourself on, on different topics and different skills. So yeah, please Absolutely. feel free to follow either myself or, or, or the World Cup uh, on LinkedIn. We really post not only you know, competition news, but also some useful resources for, for Excel, for financial modelers. So it's not only about you know, competition, it's also quite a lot about training. It will be even more now as, as we have partnered with Microsoft. Okay. All right. So thank you so much, Andrew, for uh, imparting all of your uh, fantastic tips and tricks uh, on us today. Thank you to Sergey, to Nitish and to Maria for joining us from the panel. And thank you everybody for attending. I will send out all of the stuff that I promised you. I will get that to you tomorrow. So have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye.